Today is April 16th, 2013, a Tuesday, a Venus day, and um, Venus ruling Tuesday, that is. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, video encoding. I got off on uh, this tack going down this rabbit hole when um, I made a comment to a couple of the um, <coughs> SEO and digital marketing threads that I participate in about a new filter that uh, FFmpeg added called MP Decimate and um, the the reason you might be interested in this is that if you're serving uh, videos off your site or you're serving um, VSLs or PowerPoint presentations or you're doing um, uh, serving videoized audios, which just means wrapping a um, uh, wrapping your audio with a single video frame that has your resource block, you know, kind of like an article resource block that has your website and contact name, etc. Um, if you're serving these files, then your goal is to have the highest quality files and the the um, the smallest file size so that you, you know, pay for the least amount of bandwidth that you possibly can. So that's what all this is about is creating um, uh, high quality uh, small files that can uh, serve at uh, uh, you know very, very quickly and also uh, cost you very little because the bandwidth that's serving the size of the file is small so there's less bandwidth. So <clears throat> anyway you can look at these uh, these test clips that I made here at uh, davidfavor.com slash media slash beautiful dash business slash test and um, these are just different uh, forms of um, our different recipes of encoding and I'll go over how I created these um, right quick because I, I learned a tremendous amount about um, uh, encoding. So here, here's a, I basically wrote a script uh, to generate a whole bunch of different clips using a whole bunch of different recipes and I'll uh, tell you um, how this script works. Uh, first off, uh, I'm using this uh, really huge uh, 15 frame per second uh, PowerPoint presentation that I did that's annotated with an audio track as my input file and I'm only taking uh, a 60 second, the first 60 second uh, swath of that. So that's what this time 60 means because you know some of these uh, encoding uh, recipes take uh, a fairly substantial amount of time so rather than waiting for hours and hours and hours for this to finish I'm just taking 60 seconds off the front. Now uh, if you look at the the general format, here's the FFmpeg. Uh, there's the transcode or the recipe that generates the clip, and this benchmark here, this first benchmark number tells you the number of microseconds of uh, time it took, uh, you know, from the system to actually do the encoding. The next one is the amount of memory that was used, and this is the resulting file size that was generated. So. For this first one, um, if you look here, you'll notice that I've simply copied the video codec. That's what uh, this dash C means codec and colon V means the video stream. So the video stream I've copied and the codec audio, the audio stream I've copied. So I took the first 60 seconds and copied it. So if I just copied that, that tells me that my baseline is almost um, 7 megabyte for 60 seconds. That is just outrageously huge so you don't want to be serving that especially off your site and, and the reason this is uh, important is that you know if you serve your content off of uh, YouTube you know pretty much anybody can get to it in some way and um, it's very difficult to set um, YouTube videos up in a monetization um, or a marketing flow sequence uh, if you're serving videos off your site your own site you've just get all sorts of flexibility so that's what this is basically about is uh, encoding videos that you can serve off your site now alternatively if you use this sort of the same sort of technology you can compress your videos before you upload them to YouTube and your upload time will be substantially uh, reduced for example I had a um, 
a video interview I did with uh, Roy Williams that I've got as a um, uh, back-end bonus for my beautiful business Kindle book on Amazon, which, by the way, you should buy a copy and especially go and while the limited time bonus for Roy Williams interview is up, uh, watch it. Um, anyway, the the size of that file was uh, over 20 gigabyte, and I ran it through a um, a very high quality slow encoding uh, sequence, and we'll talk about quality and speed of encoding here in a minute. Anyway, the result of that was it took about three or four hours to encode it. Um, to compress it and the quality looked the same as the original file uh, and the resulting file was around I think five or six hundred megabyte so it went from uh, almost 21 gigabyte down to around 600 megabyte so the upload speed to YouTube changed from uh, 23 hours to I think it uploaded in 20 or 30 minutes something like that and the reason you you're after quick uploads into YouTube is for two reasons one is if you've got a video that takes 20 hours to upload and your connection breaks at 18 hours you have to start over again so a, a 20 or 30 minute window uh, ensures that your videos will you know have a better likelihood of uploading once the video is uploaded into YouTube if you've got a you know a 20 gigabyte video which is the current uh, cap at least for my account uh, most people's are capped to 15 minutes um, if you've been you know putting videos on YouTube long enough they extend your <clears throat> file size to 20 gigabyte no time limit uh, the challenge is that if you you know are the difference is if you upload a 600 megabyte file versus a 20 gigabyte or 21 gigabyte the time it's going to take uh, YouTube to transcode that into all the different formats you know it transcodes into all the mobile formats and uh, different like um, you know 480p and 720p and 1080p you know the the smaller the file you give YouTube the faster the transcoder at YouTube is going to be able to create that file so in general for me um, I can take a 15 minute file and encode it uh, or an audio file and encode it with a, a frame wrapper with my resource block and upload it to YouTube and within 10 or 15 minutes all the transcodes will be finished so that's way better than waiting for um, you know hours or days for the transcodes to finish all right, so back to this. Um, so we've done our um, we've done our copy sequence here to get 60 seconds to tell what our baseline is. So we, we're starting with a seven seven megabyte file. Now this next one, uh, I'll be using uh, LiveX264, which is the H.264 encoder for MP4. All these are going to be MP4 um, containers. And inside those containers, the video stream is going to be H.264, and the audio stream is going to be MP3. And this should, uh, you now we get some special effects here with the uh, low flying crop duster. Um, if you've got an MP4 uh, container and a H.264 video stream and an MP3 audio stream, that should play on every. Um, iOS and Android device, so all your iPads, iPods, iPhones, and all your Android uh, phones and tablets. And also it'll, it should play on um, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac computers too. Alright, so um, the uh, video codec here I've got at LiveX264, that's what this codec video is here. And then codec audio is I'm using uh, MP3. I'm doing a, a single channel because there's no reason to use stereo. That's just going to make the file bigger. I'm using um, uh, 44100 uh, kilohertz um, uh, audio rate because that makes a really high quality uh, audio. And then I'm also sell t setting the, the um, overall quality to a 9, which is the highest quality audio. Uh, because just in general when you're generating videos you can sacrifice the video quality all day long just as long as you uh, make the audio quality as high as possible uh, there's lots of usability studies that say that um, you know people watching grainy videos um, are much more forgiving 
and we'll watch those videos, videos to the end or at least for a longer period of time so long as the audio quality is stellar so keep that in mind all right so this first encoding uh, I'm using the new um, filter MP decimate which uh, released into the FFmpeg repository which is the the coding system that the developers use. Uh, it won't re release to the public until probably uh, I'm guessing a few weeks to a few months whenever FFmpeg 1.2.1 releases. Uh, 1.2.0 is out right now so when the the 121 release comes out MP Decimate will be in there. Um, so MP Decimate to run it it took uh, 41 seconds. There's the memory, you know, a substantial amount of memory, and the, the size of the file was 1.3 megabytes. Now, what MP Decimate does is it basically looks at frames side by side and says, does, um, you know, if we, if I, I'm going to take frame one and frame two, and then I'm going to say, is frame two uh, the same as frame one? And if it is, throw it out. Just drop it. Just flat out drop it and continue to present frame one. So that means if you've got thousands of frames that are the same, MP Decimate, um, you know, could conceivably reduce the file the file size uh, by a considerable amount. At least that's the idea. In practice though, it's much less useful than you might expect. I would have expected uh, MP Decimate to run really fast, but if, if you look here, so here's the Decimate um, recipe and then the next one here uh, see I've said to, to use the preset to do a transcode ultra fast and 25 uh, CRF is a constant rate quality of 25 which is pretty darn high and I'm uh, also uh, using uh, a preset that allows targeting uh, phones this is one thing MP Decimate won't do is you can only use MP Decimate for um, uh, uploading videos to YouTube or serving them off your system to uh, desktop systems. Um, probably not going to work for most um, low-end devices like phones. Some of the tablets it might work. Um, and the reason for that is that most of the low-end phones use um, a profile of baseline. And what what profiles are, they're different profiles like baseline and main and uh, high and a whole bunch of other esoteric ones. Basically what that says is uh, it's a sub-format like a dialect. Like, um, you know, in, in the U.S. Uh, everybody speaks English and their dialects. There's like uh, Texican, which is down here in the south, and and then there's Oki and um, there's uh, Southern and uh, New York and LA. There's all sorts of different dialects. So you can think of the the um, the uh, language as uh, LibX264 or H.264, and the dialect is whatever the profile is. So I've said I've set the profile to baseline so it'll play on any device that will play any MP4 video. And since my um, since my video is basically a set of um, uh, still images, I guess that uh, telling FFmpeg to tune the video stream to still images, I haven't tested this. Uh, there might be a better encoding um, format, but I, I'm, I'm guessing still images will make this uh, encoding run much faster. If you use, for example, tune to animation, that's going to use a whole other set of uh, code inside of the the uh, X264 encoder to handle the transitions before between animation frames which are going to be very fast and have small changes with still images your changes are going to be very slow and um, you know all over the whole frame if you're going from one still image to another to another that are the same there's going to be very little change with animation you're going to go from one frame to another and there could be thousands of changes all over the frame. Like imagine an explosion that's um, the edges of the explosion are proceeding outward. Uh, you know, you could have a, a huge number of uh, changes inside uh, a frame to frame transition. So that's why I use the still image. And again, I use the same, um, you know, uh, MP3 preset. 
Now what I did was there are three um, three recipes I used here. I used uh, one uh, CRF 25 which is a fairly high quality um, constant rate uh, quality. 32 is the lowest possible uh, and what I found was which is really interesting um, if you look at um, if you look at the um, the difference between constant rate 25 and 32 uh, using an ultra fast uh, time for the encoding so the the preset ha says how long the encoding is going to take and so ultra fast means to you know go as fast as possible sacrificing uh, file size for speed of encoding and so what I saw was for um, a quality of 25 versus a quality of 32 the speed um, you know, it didn't change that much, but the file size for the higher quality trans uh, transcode is uh, almost double. You know what the the low quality is, and when you're doing um, VSLs and PowerPoint and things like that, and single frame videos, I couldn't tell any difference between a CRF of 32 and a CRF of zero, which is the highest quality possible. But I did see, you know, a big, huge difference in file size. And as the as this setting goes down, the quality goes up. In other words, uh, CRF zero is the highest quality in the longest time. Um, then this file size um, tends to go up. Now, this the second one though um, is pretty interesting because what I did is say, uh, give me the lowest quality and then take the longest possible to do every conceivable op optimization. There is one preset that goes slower called placebo. It goes about twice as long and usually there's uh, you know uh, an indiscernible difference in file size. So what I found here was uh, if I was going to deploy um, videos on my site probably what I would do would be to run it through this recipe first which would take uh, notice that um, it took seven seconds versus 72 seconds for the same 60 second encoding. So basically what I would do is I would uh, do the encoding on the video here first and just put it up on the side to get it serving and then run this which might take you know depending on how long the video was 60 seconds so this is going to take probably a minute um, a minute uh, for every minute so you know to transcode an hour-long video it's going to take an hour whereas this one would take uh, seven seconds times 60 take about four minutes uh, to encode the uh, an hour-long video so my point here is that you can do this one first get your video up within you know four or five minutes and then do this one in background and if you require to change any settings you can keep changing settings and then once you've got the video at the smallest file size then you can just overwrite the um, you know this uh, uh, target here in other words um, if you just overwrite the video then the next time somebody comes and visits they'll get the new version uh, and so the difference in file size is you know probably what about uh, uh, 15, maybe about 20 percent or something like that. Uh, notice it does take a huge amount of memory. Oh, and also I should mention that uh, I'm running this on a box um, that runs uh, the uh, the whole recipe using 12 threads. So you you can't really do something like this on a um, you know like a cloud instance or a toy computer that's like uh, you know something on host gator or something like that because it would in essence take 12 times longer so you know to do a, 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 a cloud instance is going to take 72 times 12 seconds so you know that's going to take uh, eight what eight nine ten maybe minutes depending on what else is going on in the system for every minute of time in your video that's going to be painful um, and interestingly enough, I did a cost analysis um, here for um, a section of the beautiful business book I wrote um, in version 1.10, which is going to release uh, today. 
Uh, and, and I did a cost comparison between a dedicated server and the same exact configuration on um, an Amazon Cloud instance, and it was pretty plain Jane server. It's the kind of the um, you know, run of the mill servers that I run, which are um, uh, quad core, which is uh, quad core times two, so they're eight core machines, so they run eight threads, and uh, have. Um, uh, two 500 gig um, disk drives running in RAID 1 configuration. So if one drive fails, the other one kicks on, and uh, my hosting company gets notified, and they just go swap out a drive, and the data catches up. So I never even noticed the machine went down. Uh, and five terabytes of um, outbound bandwidth uh, a month. And for Amazon, the low end, I couldn't quite come up with a way to configure it exactly. It looked like um, the ballpark of that was going to cost between a thousand and twelve hundred dollars a month, and I think I pay one twenty a month per server or something like that. So, basically, the cloud instances you get from Amazon will cost you ten x what a dedicated server will will uh, get you. All right, so uh, I think that's uh, probably enough um, about uh, encoding right now. The last thing I'd like to say about this is that. Um, uh, if we look at uh, the um, if we look at the uh, the input video here, uh, you'll notice that this is uh, a um, 720p video, so it's uh, 1280 by 720. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is that when you're when you're encoding MP4s for uh, playback on multi-platforms, what you're going to really require using is the um, uh, how can I say this? Um, the uh, it's a multi-stream container format, which means an MP4 that has embedded inside it uh, maybe eight or ten or twenty different formatted videos. So what you do is you encode like um, uh, a video for uh, iPhone 3s and iPhone 4s and iPads and Kindle Fires and uh, Android HTCs and H Android HTC Ones and Galaxy 8 tablets. And then also you encode a 720p and a 1080p and eventually I guess a 4x5 standard. I have no idea even how to begin to encode one of those yet, but that's what all the new theaters have. So basically you encode all these videos and you you put them inside a container that's like a, a file folder that's an MP4 uh, type of container. And then what happens is uh, when somebody with a sp specific device comes and accesses that video, the container format arranges for the correct video and audio stream to be sent to the correct device. Uh, so for example, um, uh, you might create MP4 streams that have like um, a 240p video, which is you know a small uh, high def video with both a um, AAC audio track and also an MP3 audio track. So in case you end up with a device um, like a Google Nexus phone. I'm unsure if they support MP3 or AAC or what. Um, so if you put your, your different uh, audio and video streams in there too, the format container takes care of basically whenever somebody comes to your site, um, the container format and also your web server, which has to be configured specifically, will figure out how to send the correct audio and video stream pair out of that file folder, this is a good way to think of it, down the pipe to the device on the other end. And um, you know, it's a, this is really, um, it's very important when you're doing things like uh, mobile ad serving uh, and um, well any kind of mobile interaction at all you really have to know you really have to understand how to do all your encoding so that um, the correct uh, video and audio gets uh, shoved down the pipe to your user otherwise if you just uh, you know encode a 240p video that's an mp4 with h264 and um, an mp3 audio uh, you may end up with uh, 
uh, either today or down the road, sometime when some new device comes out, you may end up with everybody that has that new device won't be able to um, make sense of your your video. In other words, you, the audio might play with no video, or the video might play with no audio. So it's really important to you know make sure that you're um, you're on track and you understand how how that works. And then the you know the ultimate test is you you know make sure that you've got like a you know an iPad and a Galaxy 8 or Galaxy 10.5 uh, tablet and then a Nuxus phone and tablet and um, you know uh, a um, HTC phone and tablet and if you're doing mobile type of um, either mobile ads or uh, any type of courseware that you um, you know, imagine that your users are going to be using these different different devices to view. You've got to really um, run through a test suite of every time you deploy a video to make sure that um, you can uh, view that uh, either ad or courseware or VSL, whatever it is, on all the devices. Um, you know, and you have to actually go through and watch the whole video on every device, and also run the scrubber all the way to the end to make sure that the video. Um, you know basically breaks down the connection correctly so when videos start playing they they build up a connection and then the video plays and then the connection breaks down and sometimes at the uh, end of uh, videos there are kind of odd things that happen so anyway uh, that's uh, the uh, wrap up on um, video um, transcoding uh, and the the real dirt on MP Decimate and uh, also uh, doing uh, mobile ads and um, uh, mobile um, uh, courseware.